This lesson will show how to solve quadratic equations by factoring and also an application involving quadratic equation solving. In the first example on this page, there's two examples, and we're asked to solve and check all answers. And we're going to solve by the method of factoring. So in order to solve x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0, we're going to factor the x squared minus 2x minus 15. And the way we would factor this, we look for two numbers that add to negative 2 and that multiply to negative 15. And those numbers, of course, are negative 5 and 3. Negative 5 and 3 add to negative 2, the coefficient of the linear term, the x term, and they multiply to negative 15, which again is the constant in the end. And so since the numbers are negative 5 and 3, that means that this factors into x minus 5 and x plus 3. Now think of what's in the brackets here as two different things. We've got the first bracket multiplied, remember there's an applied multiplication here, multiplied by the second bracket, and those the product of those two things equals 0. Now if you have two different things that multiply to give you 0, or even two of the same things, then either the first one is 0, or the second one has a value of 0, or of course they both could be 0. And so that's how we solve to find what x is here. So we set each of these factors, x minus 5, and x plus 3, we set each of them equal to 0. And so if we set x minus 5 equal to 0, the, the number that makes that true, that when we subtract 5 from whatever x is, we get 0, the answer to that would be 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. And over here on the right side for the second one, x plus 3 equals 0. So if we solve for x, negative 3 is what you add to 3 to get 0. So negative 3 is another solution. Now, what we're going to do now is verify or check to make sure that those two answers are correct. That if we put 5 in the original equation, that and evaluate, and evaluate if we put 5 in place of x, that it does work out to equal 0, which is what's on the right side. And the same with the negative 3. If we put negative 3 in here and here, that this does again work out to a value of 0. So, checking the 5 solution, we put five this 5 in here, so this would be 5 squared, which is right there. And then we put 5 here, we go minus 2 times 5, which is right there, minus the 15. And we evaluate. 5 squared is, of course, 25. Uh, 2 times 5 is 10, so we're subtracting 10 there, and then minus, minusing 15 as well. Uh, 25 minus 10 minus 15 is 0. And so the 5 checks. The 5 is a correct solution. Now we'll check also the negative 3. So we put negative 3 in here. It would be negative 3 squared minus 2 times negative 3 minus the 15, which is exactly what we have here. And so negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, and then minus the 15. Well, 9 and 6 is 15, and then minus this 15 gives you 0. So the negative 3 checks as well. Now, on to b in the bottom part of the page. In order to factor 2x squared plus 7x plus 6, we need to find two numbers to add to 7, and then multiply to the product of 2 and 6, which of course is 12. And so the two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 12 would be 3 and 4. 3 and 4 add to 7 and multiply to 12. So remember what we do with those 3 and 4. We break that 7x term down into a 3x term and a 4x term. And then we common factor of the first two terms. We can common factor an x out. So we factor an x out of a 2x squared, we get 2x. And an x out of a 3x, we get 3. We can common factor a 2 out of the last two terms. You get 2, and then 2 factored out of 4x is 2x. 2 factored out of 6 is this 3 here. Remember again, what's in the bracket should be the same, and it is, so that's a good thing. So we common factor a 2x plus 3 out, and the other factor will be x plus 2. Now we set each of those factors to 0 and solve for x. So either the 2x plus 3 equals 0 or the x plus 2 equals 0. Now, it's solving 2x plus 3 equals 0, we subtract 3 from both sides or bring the 3 over to this side so we would get 2x equals negative 3. And then I want to find what x is. I don't need to know what 2x is or twice x is. I need to find what x is. So I would divide out the 2 and then we would get x to be negative 3 halves. 2 does not divide evenly into negative 3, so we leave it as negative 3 over 2. From this factor, x plus 2 equals 0, the solution would be negative 2, because negative 2 is what you add to 2 to give you 0. 
And so we'll check each of these. So I'm going to take the negative 3 halves and I'm going to put them in place of x. So this would be 2 times negative 3 halves squared, which is exactly what's here. And then we would also put the negative 3 halves here. So plus 7 times the negative 3 halves, which is right here, plus the 6. Now when you square a fraction like negative 3 halves, you square the negative 3, which is 9, and 2 squared is 4 in the denominator. And then uh, over here in the middle, 7 times negative 3 is negative 21 over 2. Now, I can simplify this a little bit. This 2 will divide into the 4, leaving a 2 in the denominator. So we would have 9 halves minus 21 halves. And you think of that, there's a common denominator, so you do not need to get a further common denominator. 9 halves minus 12 halves would be negative sorry, 9 halves minus 21 halves would be negative 12 halves. And then so plus the 6. Now this is actually negative 6 here, plus 6 would give us 0. And so the negative 3 halves checks. The negative 2 is a little simpler because there's no fractions involved, so we put negative 2 in here and here. And so negative 2 squared is 4, times 2 is 8. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14, plus the 6. Uh, 8 and 6 add to 14, and then minus this 14 gives you 0. So it does check. Flipping over to the example on the second page, the path of a rock thrown from the top of a building is modeled by this equation. The height is negative x squared plus 4x plus 60. h is the vertical height in meters above the ground, and x is the horizontal distance from the building, also in meters. And we're asked, how far does the rock travel horizontally before it hits the ground? Well, when it hits the ground, the height would be 0. So we're going to get a, a quadratic equation once we substitute 0 in place of h. And so if we do that, we're left with then the negative x squared plus 4x plus 60 is equal to 0. Again, when it hits the ground over here, the height would be 0. Now, you can divide out a negative 1 to make the uh, quadratic term, the x squared term, positive. So if you divide everything by negative 1, every sign changes. Negative x squared becomes x squared, 4x becomes negative 4x, and 60 becomes minus 60. And now we need two numbers that add to negative 4 and multiply to negative 60. And there's lots of factors of 60, but the numbers that work are 6 and negative 10. Because 6 and negative 10 add to negative 4, and they multiply to negative 60 on the end. Now setting each of these to 0, negative 6 is what makes x plus 6 have a value of 0. And since we have x minus 10 here, we put a 10 in here, 10 minus 10 also gives a value of 0. Now, the negative distance, actually, it kind of has a meaning here, but it's not really applicable to the problem we have here, because we are going to throw the rock out here. We're interested in how far from the bottom of the, the building it actually hits the ground. And so we discard the negative root, and so here goes our rock here. This is what it looks like. And so that distance from the building out must be 10 meters. What the negative 6 actually could mean here is if the building wasn't here and we had somebody on the other side of where the building is, or isn't, and they were to throw the rock to make it follow exactly along the same path, then they would have to be 6 meters to the left of that point right there. So there is kind of a meaning to that negative 6, but it's not really applicable to the problem here. We're really concerned with this 10 meter distance. It actually will fall 10 meters uh, out from the, uh, the side of the building. And so the rock travels horizontally 10 meters before it hits the ground. And that's the end of the lesson.